once again, I'll never give you medical advice, but I, I will tell you medical advice that I take. I will take the medical advice to get a calcium score done on my arterial system here cardiovascular wise. And I wanna make sure I'm not building up any calcium in there because that is related to plaque. And placking one skin can relate to some cardiac event, which could be either life-threatening or just having an episode that can be damaging and cause a stroke and different things. Do you take vitamin D? Um, do I take vitamin D? Um, yes. Now, let me explain. Okay. There's multiple reasons why I take vitamin D. I take vitamin D, number one, because I live in Green Bay, Wisconsin. <laughs> okay. And if you look at Green Bay, Wisconsin, um, even though that uh, yesterday I was outside a ton. Now, are you going to get a little bit of vitamin D production from being outside? Yeah, but I had a big winter jacket on. I had a beanie on. I actually had, and I had it zipped up all the way to like here because the wind was kind of crazy. Um, I had pants on, shoes on. So I had a very small part of my body that was going to get enough surface area to be exposed to get vitamin D production. So therefore, I had to supplement with it. But the one thing I want you to understand is this. Vitamin D is so important. Um, a lot of people always say this. Say, Doc, you know, do I need to take more calcium? Did you understand that when you when you actually take vitamin D3, it increases your absorption of calcium now once again? Stats always range, guys. See, that's one thing about research. There's a variability that way. I've seen it say that it increases by 18 times to 20 times. And I've seen as high as 22, where they say, you know, and that means if you eat calcium, you get that much more absorption because calcium helps it be absorbed through the intestinal tract. Now, but here's the thing. But then you can end up with hypercalcemia which can lead to some pretty crazy things. For example, you do not want tissues calcifying. It's very common for tissues to calcify when there's inflammatory and things in it that are bad. For example, if you look at a very important test, a very important medical test, once again, I'll never give you medical advice, but I, I will tell you medical advice that I take. I will take the medical advice to get a calcium score done on my arterial system here cardiovascular wise. And I want to make sure I'm not building up any calcium in there because that is related to plaque. And placking, once again, can relate to some cardiac event, which could be either life-threatening or just having an episode that can be damaging and cause a stroke and different medical tests. Once again, I'll never give you medical advice, but I, I will tell you medical advice that I take. I will take the medical advice to get a calcium score done on my arterial system here cardiovascular wise. And I want to make sure I'm not building up any calcium in there because that is related to plaque. And placking, once again, can relate to some cardiac event, which could be either life-threatening or just having an episode that can be damaging and cause a stroke and different things. So what I want you guys to do is this. That's why when people just start to take calcium, or so apologize, vitamin D, they start to see high levels of calcium, and that could contribute to some even kidney stones. So that's why you look is, is if you look at, um, it can build up in the arteries, the joints, the eyes. Okay, remember that. You build up the eyes, and that's why sometimes you'll see some eye problems if hypercalcinemia is there. It'll do in the kidneys, that's kidney stone, lungs, skin, and breast tissue. That's why women will get some hard things happening within their breast tissue because this is where calcium can deposit. So therefore, if you notice, when vitamin D started to get popular, they should just have vitamin D supplements. Now, I will take it based on my blood work, about, about 15,000 a day. It keeps my blood work right around 70 as far as the um, labs. And everybody be different. Everybody be different. So let's see, when I'm giving you like what I'm doing, that doesn't mean you do that because you're not me. You might not have the same activity level. You might not be the same size. You might be female. It might be, you know, it might be some male, but you might be taller, or shorter. You might be less or more active. So therefore, but then on top of it, what you have to now know is that vitamin D mobilizes calcium. That's a good thing. We need calcium mobilized. But we don't want calcium mobilized going into other tissues that belong, doesn't belong. Calcium uh, has a position in a lot of tissues, including joints and stuff. But if it gets too much, guess what happens? It's going to be spurring and some other problems that happen there. So that's why if you notice, they start to stick K2 in there. K2. So I don't take a vitamin D. I take a vitamin D3 with K2. Now, K2, once again, helps get calcium where it belongs in the bone. It's actually called a process. Uh, it's osteocalin, I think it's called, and stuff. And what it does, it takes your blood, it takes it from the blood and moves to the bone. It's actually a calcium transporter. So K2, now remember, K1 and K2 are a little bit different. Um, K1, once again, they, it was discovered first. That's why it's called K1. <laughs> it's for coagulation. <laughs> That's what it is. It's like, it's like, what's the first vitamin they ever discovered? Vitamin A. What's the first, second vitamin they ever discovered? Vitamin B. 
Zajok, that's how, that's how they named them. And vitamin C and so far. Do you guys understand there's a vitamin P? Do you know what it stands for? Permeability. But see what happens is they have this discoveries of it this way. So what they, what they realize is that K2, once again, stimulates and activates a protein called the matrix GLA. Okay, now what that does though, it removes calcium from those tissues that could be damaged and calcified. That's important, guys, because there's a lot of people that go to the doctor and on the medical approach and they see, and then what they do is they see um, um, calcium buildup within their arteries. And that's a bad day. I think that's very cautious. You gotta be careful because that's why when you're getting advice as far as like, when the doctors are giving you advice of statins and other things, they're trying to make sure that there's not a buildup there. Because that buildup becomes there, it becomes really bad. Now, once again, on the flip side, you can support your body with a fat soluble vitamin K2 that can help you start to remove some things from the tissues. And that's why you can see some progress or even a reduction in your calcium score. So there, there's people that get really high calcium scores and the current advice that people give you medically, they say there's nothing you can do, there's things, you end up with surgery, stuff like that. But if you start to support your body with K1, you have more chance of removing it from those tissues and mobilizing where it belongs, which is mainly bone. It mainly belongs in bone. It doesn't mean it doesn't belong in some tissues. It's just that a lot of people, when they're inflammatory, calcium builds up a lot and then it becomes hardening of it. And once again, so you gotta look and go, okay, doc, what can I eat that can do that? You're gonna see it in a lot of animal fats. You do, you see, you see it in a lot of fat-based things that way. But you also see it in a lot of fermented-based products. Now, as you guys know, okay, I'm a huge person that loves fermented food. Does anybody wanna know what my favorite fermented food is? Okay, anybody wanna take a guess? Let's see if anybody says it on the thing here. Let's see if anybody, I'm gonna pour a little bit of more of my root beer in here. What is my favorite fermented food? And it's again, my, my audience should get that and stuff. Come on, Facebook. There you go, Mandy. Thank you, Mandy. Okay, Mandy said sauerkraut. Yes, sauerkraut. Now remember, I can't see what the other things I see my Facebook right here is, um, Rachel, I do love fermented beets. That's one of my top five, okay? Kimchi, okay, yes, once again. Now let me give you an example. There are great K2-based foods, and, and here's what happens this. Even though that I take vitamin D3, I still like to take vitamin um, K2 with it, even though I eat a bunch of vitamin K2, but I want you to think about this. There is a ratio. For every 10,000 of IUs of vitamin D, you want roughly 100 micrograms of K2. So I want you to think about that when you look at a bottle of vitamin D K2, that way you want, you want to go from there. But I want you to think about this. If we look at things that have um, K2 in them, things like um, grass-fed um, butter and also ghee, okay? Those are wonderful products, okay? Listen to this. Also, you know, if you look at what happens is hard and soft cheeses. Think of this way. If you look at true cheeses, I know a lot of people are don't like dairy, but let me explain this. If you if if everything is done right, dairy is very good for you. Now, am I a fan of raw dairy that I covered? Because last week I think we had a call about raw dairy. No, because I want it to ferment. I want it to ferment. Now there's bacterial changes that rid some of the, the, the harmful. You grow some other fat cell body. Do you, do you understand this? Um, I watched, I watched uh, somebody say that the only hormone or the only vitamin your body makes is vitamin D. That's not really true. Your bacteria in your GI tract can even produce B vitamins. They produce it. And so when you, when you put bacteria within dairy and ferment it, K2 becomes quite well. That's why some of the most organic, best grass-fed cheeses that have had no processing, minimal, well, everything's processed if it's not just pure raw. But to get my point, when I talk about processing, I'm talking about putting chemicals in there and doing all the bad stuff. But look at cheeses. Egg yolks. Egg yolks are huge with it. Now remember, chicken, beef, goose, liver. High forms of CO2. So we're talking about some of these things are the animal fats that are there to have it, okay? Now, this is a controversial topic. It really is. I made some of the women recently eat this and I had some of it myself too and I wanted to see what would happen. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit more experimenting with my body on this personally, uh, but I just, I really found a really good source of NATO. Now, believe it or not, I'm not getting it for the K2, I'm getting it for the NATO kinase. There's certain enzyme I wanna see and, and it just, 
in, in NATO. Now, NATO is an organic. Now, remember, these, I, I'm, I'm sad I even have to like put these terms out there. If we were talking 150 years ago, I don't have to say the word organic. You know, 70 years ago, I don't have to say the word organic, okay? But I want you to think about this. I want to talk about the fact that it's like I have to label all these things before I can say the product. Organic, you know, uh, non-GMO, uh, NATO, you know what I'm saying, which is a fermented soybean. Now, when you do ferment things, it does rid some of the things that could be a little bit harmful for us um, and takes it and makes it a little bit more digestible, makes it um, the nutrients more available. You know, it's really funny. Somebody said something to me the other day and um, it was a question on Instagram. It just popped in my head, so I have to say it. Um, a person said, you know, Doc, and, and they're more of a carnivore person. Cool, I get it. I'm, I'm, I, I said, I can honestly tell you, if you had the standard American diet and moved carnivore, you're gonna see great changes in a, in a really good positive way. Do I still think there should be more than that? I personally do. I can't get rid of fermented products like sauerkraut and things like that. But I want, to think, I want you to think of this way. As they said, you know, well, you know, um, plants have defense mechanisms so we don't eat them. I'm like, if the cow knew I was gonna kill him and eat him, he'd probably defend himself too. <laughs> No, you know what I'm saying? If he knew I was going to eat him and going to kill him and he could understand it, he probably would put his defenses up too, wouldn't he? He'd probably bite me, kick me, you know, do things. Now, once again, because we know, because a lot of people, because people say, well, doc, they're, they're, and trust me, there are defense mechanisms that plants have that like for certain seeds and stuff like that, that if a bird puts it, it's actually, it creates pain in them, they spit it out. And there's a survival. I mean, as a species, guess what happens? We don't want to die. Why do you think we even create a healthcare system? We don't want to die. And maybe it's just, just age and nature is going to try to get. So I, I, I watch all these funny reasons. And it's like plants have defense mechanisms. That's why not so we eat them. Well, the cow is going to be ticked off if we know that we're going to eat them too. And that's why maybe that's where mad cow disease came from. Boo. <laughs> I'm, on a, I'm on a roll. Come on now. Okay. But here we go. If you also look at, so therefore there's some things that with, um, now, if I wasn't trying to get NATO kinase from soy, I don't need K2, I can get it from, I can get it from sauerkraut. But what, are, what other thing does sauerkraut have in it at a high level? Vitamin C, vitamin C. Does anybody wanna know a major sign of vitamin C deficiency? Bleeding gums, bleeding gums. Just remember that, bleeding gums. If, you, if you're brushing your teeth and get a lot of bleeding gums, understand there's gonna be some issues there. Now, another thing that has K2 from an animal-based product is salmon, is salmon, so remember that, okay? And what this does now by having K2 helps with insulin sensitivity, helps with wrinkles, ladies, it helps with varicose veins, it helps with cavities, because your bones, your teeth are bones. So when I see so many kids having bone problems and teeth problems, I'm like, they're not getting enough K2. They're not getting enough things to, to, to use that calcium transporter to get it to the teeth, to get it to the bones, to get it to, to your structure, all right? On, and that's why we need to see a good ratio of vitamin D and K2. So I tell people, when I was in Hawaii, you know, um, we had the opportunity to go to Hawaiian Moon, which is a wonderful um, organic grocery store um, on the island. And also, I even stopped at Whole Foods. So what did we get? We got the sauerkraut. So I want you to think about this. I was sitting in the sun, got vitamin D, and then I went and, and ate sauerkraut. So I was getting my vitamin D K2 in combination, but I could get it when I was sitting on the beach. And because I once again had the shirt off, I had shorts on, my legs got sun, my head got sun, my, my chest got sun. So therefore, compared to yesterday, I got very little sun. So to kind of wrap around, that was a hell of a long answer for asking me if I take vitamin D. You saying? So do I take vitamin D? Yes. But there's multiple things that go into if I'm going to take vitamin D and things like that. Just understand there's factors that all contribute to those things that are going on.